Now we're going to talk about a general template for a shortest path algorithm. This template can be instantiated in different ways. All of the shortest path algorithms that we will look at, the Bellman-Ford algorithm, finding shortest paths in a DAG, and Dijkstra's algorithm, are going to be instantiations of this template. OK, let's recall the setup. We want to solve the single source shortest path problem. Let's say our source is vertex 0. We want to compute two things. The first is the distance from vertex 0 to every other vertex in the graph. <clears throat> Recall that we use d of 0, i to denote the distance from vertex 0 to vertex i. That is the length of a shortest path from vertex 0 to vertex i. We output this via a size n array called dis2. So the goal is that at the end of the algorithm, dis2 of i is equal to the distance from vertex 0 to vertex i for every vertex i. We also want to output a data structure that allows the reconstruction of shortest paths from the source vertex. This is given by a size n array called edge2, where edge2 of i is the vertex before i on a shortest path to i from the source vertex. We set edge2 of i to be negative 1 when there is no previous vertex on this path, for example, when i is the source itself or is a vertex which is not reachable from the source. OK, now let's get into a general template for a single source shortest path algorithm. We initialize the dis2 array so that dis2 of 0 is 0. Remember that 0 is our source or starting vertex. And so the distance from 0 to 0 is indeed 0. For every other vertex i, we initialize dis2 of i to be infinity. There are two invariants that our generic algorithm is going to maintain as it runs. The first invariant is that dis2 of i is always an upper bound on the actual distance from vertex 0 to vertex i. Note that this is true initially in the way that we initialize the dis2 array. The second invariant that we want to maintain is that tracing back from vertex i in the edge to array realizes a path from vertex 0 to vertex i whose length is at most dis2 i. So in other words, if you start at vertex i, then you go backwards to vertex edge 2 of i, from there, you go backwards to vertex edge 2 of edge 2 of i, and you keep going backwards in this way until you reach vertex 0. Then when you follow these vertices in the reverse order, that gives you a path from vertex 0 to vertex i of length at most dis2 of i. We initialize the edge 2 array to be negative 1 everywhere. This initialization satisfies invariant 2 because when dis2 of i is infinity, then the edge to array does not actually need to provide a path to vertex i from vertex 0. The generic algorithm does the same basic operation over and over again. We call this operation relaxing an edge. So the algorithm just chooses an edge e, let's say it's from vertex u to vertex v, and it checks if dis2 of u plus the weight of edge e is less than dis2 of v. If it is, then the relax operation updates dis2 of v to be dis2 of u plus the weight of edge e. And it also updates edge2 of v to be the vertex u. So it's important to note that we only do this update if dis2 of u plus the weight of edge e is less than dis2 of v. So this means that dis2 of v is never going to increase under edge relaxation. So as we run the generic algorithm, dis2 of v is never going to increase. The first key property of relaxing an edge is that it preserves our two invariants. This is true because of a very intuitive property known as the triangle inequality. 
If there is an edge from vertex u to vertex v, then the distance from 0 to v is at most the distance from 0 to u plus the weight of edge e. This is because to walk from 0 to v, we can first walk from 0 to u. We know there's a path from 0 to u of length the distance from 0 to u. From u, we can then walk along the edge e to arrive at vertex v. So the total length of this path is the distance from 0 to u plus the weight of edge e. Since we know that you can, you can get from 0 to v by a path of length distance of 0 to u plus the weight of edge e, this must be an upper bound on the distance from 0 to v. This is what the triangle inequality is saying. Let's see why the triangle inequality implies that edge relaxation preserves invariant 1. Remember that invariant 1 says that the distance from 0 to i is at most, as at most dis 2i for every vertex i. So suppose that this invariant is true before we relax an edge e from vertex u to vertex v. And then we want to show that the invariant still holds after we relax this edge. So since we're supposing that the invariant holds before we relax the edge, we know that the distance from 0 to u is at most dis2 of u. By the triangle inequality, we know that the distance from 0 to v is at most the distance from 0 to u plus the weight of edge e. And since the variant holds before we relax this edge, we know that the distance from 0 to u is at most the dis2 of u. So we can upper bound the first inequality by dis2 of u plus the weight of edge e. So this means that if we update dis2 of v to be dis2 of u plus the weight of edge e, we will preserve invariant 1. This will still be an upper bound on the distance from vertex 0 to vertex v. Now let's see why invariant 2 is preserved by relaxing the edge e from u to v. Again, suppose that this invariant holds before we, we, we relax the edge. So in particular, starting at u and then going backwards to edge 2 of u, then edge 2 of edge 2 of u, etc., all the way back to 0, gives a path from 0 to u of length at most dis2 of u. Say that when we relax the edge e, we actually do the update. So we set dis2 of v equal to dis2 of u plus the weight of edge e. And in this case, we also update edge2 of v to be equal to u. Then when we trace back from v using the edge2 relation, we will first go to edge2 of v, which has just been updated to be u. <clears throat> from there, we know that when we trace back, we get a path from 0 to u of length at most dis2 of u. Again, we know this because we suppose invariant 2 holds before we relax the edge e. So overall, tracing back from v using the edge 2 array gives a path from 0 to v of length at most dis2 of u plus the weight of edge e. And this shows that invariant 2 is preserved. OK, so now we've seen that relaxing edges preserves our two invariants. Now let's see how we can obtain shortest paths via relaxing edges. Before that, let's introduce a bit of terminology. We say that a sequence of edge relaxations relaxes a path E1 through EK. So those are the edges on the path. If there is a subsequence of relaxations that relaxes E1 through EK in that order. Okay, so let's look at an example. Consider the path from vertex 0 to vertex 3 in this graph that first goes to vertex 5, then vertex 1, then vertex 2, then vertex 3. So the edges on this path are from 0 to 5, 5 to 1, 1 to 2, and 2 to 3. So here's an example sequence that relaxes this path, an example sequence of edge relaxations that relaxes this path. 
First we relax 2, 3, then we relax 0, 5, then we relax 6, 3, 1, 2, 5, 1, 0, 1, 5, 4, 1, 2, and then 2, 3. So it's very important to note that we do not have to relax the edges on this path consecutively. All that matters is that at some point we relax the first edge on this path, the edge from 0 to 5. Then at some point later, we relax the second edge, that is the edge from 5 to 1. At some point later, we relax the third edge, etc. Okay, so we can do any relaxations we want in between. It just matters that there is a subsequence where we relax the edges of the path in order. That's what it means to relax a path. Okay, now we're ready to see how relaxing edges can find shortest paths. This is what I call the relax a path property. Suppose that the algorithm relaxes the shortest path from zero to V. Then I claim at the end of the algorithm, we will have dis to a V equal to the distance from zero to V. So let's see why this is the case. Suppose that this path in the picture is a shortest path from zero to V and that we relax this path. So that means that at some point, we're going to relax edge E1. And after relaxing E1, we know that dis2 of U1 is going to be at most the weight of edge E1. If this wasn't already true, when we relaxed E1, then we would update dis2 of U1 to be equal to the weight of edge E1 when we actually relax edge E1. As we relax this whole path, we know that at some point later on, we're going to relax the edge E2 from vertex U1 to vertex U2. So after relaxing E2, we know that dis2 of U2 will be at most dis2 of U1 plus the weight of edge 2. So using the fact that dis2 of u1 is less than the weight of edge e1, this means that, the, that dis2 of u2 is going to be at most the sum of the weight of edge e1 plus the weight of edge e2. Since we relax this whole path, we again know that at some point later on, we're going to relax edge e3. The same reasoning shows that after relaxing e3, dis2 of of u3 is going to be at most the weight of edge e1 plus the weight of edge e2 plus the weight of edge e3. Okay, so we can keep arguing in this fashion going along the shortest path until we reach vertex v. That is after we've relaxed this last edge on the path, edge e k plus 1. And we know that after we relax edge e k plus 1, we're going to have that dis2 of v is at most the sum from i equals 1 to k plus 1 of the weight of edge e i. But since this is the shortest path from vertex 0 to vertex v, this sum is exactly the distance from 0 to v. So this shows the relax a path property. So note that by invariant 1, we know that dis2 of v is always at least d of the distance from 0 to v. Okay, so this inequality shows that dis2 of v is at most the distance from 0 to v. And by invariant 1, we also know that the distance from 0 to v is at most dis2 of v. So this shows that they're actually equal. We also have that by invariant 2, after relaxing this path, the edge to array is going to encode a shortest path from vertex 0 to vertex v. Okay, so this is the generic template. We repeatedly pick an edge and relax it. We want to choose a sequence of relaxations so that we know that we relax a shortest path from the source vertex 0 to every other vertex reachable from 0. So what's not specified in this generic template is how to choose this sequence of relaxations. We're going to look at three implementations of the generic template that choose this sequence of edge relaxations in different ways 
and work in different kinds of graphs. The first way we're going to look at is the Bellman-Ford algorithm. This algorithm works in graphs without negative cycles, but it's fine for them to have negative edge weights. This algorithm can also detect if a graph has a negative weight cycle. When the graph has n vertices, the Bellman-Ford algorithm performs n minus 1 rounds of relaxing every edge. When the graph does not have negative cycles, we know that every shortest path has at most n minus 1 edges. So this means that we're going to relax every shortest path from the source vertex. To find shortest paths in a DAG, we can simply relax the edges in topologically sorted order. This will also relax every shortest path from the source vertex. And finally, in Dijkstra's algorithm, to find shortest paths in a graph where all edge weights are positive, what we can do is relax edges in order of their distance, in order of the distance of the origin of the edge from the source. So in the next videos, we're going to talk more specifically about all of these three algorithms.